For non words uh, souls through MP3 or YouTube channel on their we'd like to suggest the, the three expositional questions. In verse six, question one, but this I say, he who sowed sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. What does it mean in the context? What can we learn from here? Question to English 7. So let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. What does it mean in the context? And how can we apply it to our lives? Last question. What do the proof of this ministry they glorify God for the obedience of your compassion to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. What does it mean in the context and what can you learn from here? In the last time in Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 24, therefore show to them and before the churches the proof of your love and over our boasting on your behalf. During Paul's third mission tree from 53 up to 57 AD, through Titus with other Christians of the Macedonian region, likely at Philippi in Macedonia, Paul delivered this letter to churches at Corinth who allowed the desire to donate gifts to the poor church in Jerusalem a year ago, and now the church should be ready for the donation with your willing mind before Paul's arrival. In Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10 to 10, 12, right here, cross reference, then at our arrival, our boasting of God's work upon your desire to donate a year ago would be proven of a lot of love. That is a cross reference right here, right in Philippines, Corinthians there. Corinthians right hand side and Athens. Okay, number one. In Romans chapter 12, verse 8, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gets with liberality, to release with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness, to give her with the liberality is a gift of the Holy Spirit. The liberal means broad mind, open mind, or generous. Number two, all you have is given to you by God, because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth from nothing. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Therefore, money or some tangible thing which you give to God comes from God. That prayer is the first Korean chapter 29, 11, 14. Uh, David's prayer gives uh, certain uh, materials over uh, the temple uh, donated to God at you know, that time. Uh, number three, earthly things are perishable, but heavenly things, here heavenly things, in the third heaven, invisible heaven, where the Lord you know, sit there, are impalatable, so that heavenly things are eternal, while the other things are temporal. Cross references right here. Uh, first of all, when you give money or something to God from heart in the spirit, the sovereign God may give you heavenly rewards or even earthly rewards to your donation. Uh, to God may be explained for his glory, his kingdom, his righteousness, or his increase. His righteousness is revealed by your life by faith, because uh, faith comes by hearing of the word of God. Number five, the sovereign God means that God can do whatever he pleases, whether or not we understand it. That's a cross reference right here. 
so that became one example of Asad, you know, he saw, you know, uh, uh, evil man have a, a lot of money in the priest, but he recognized when he entered into the temple of God, you know, he the last, uh, uh, how uh, he would do, you know, take kind of stuff there. So our, you know, is eternal joy, you know, come from God himself. The bountifully and cheerful hearts. In the spirit, not reaching necessity or pressure in the flesh. That is uh, the flesh. Thing. Number seven, heavenly rewards are many attributes of our love, the fruit of the spirit, from the fullness of the spirit such as joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and so on. Number two, about 30 fruits of the support, such as wisdom, prophecy, tongue, evangelism, teaching, exhortation, healing, diligent leading, pastoring, and so on. Number three, in heaven, uh, the five types of crowns, such as the crown of life, incorruptible crown, Crown of rejoicing, crown of righteousness, crown of glory. Not for in heaven, not burn the reward to your words in the soul, not to your words in the flesh. Flesh all burnt out. That's a cross reference right here. Number eight, the heavenly rewards are impossible. The earthly rewards are good during physical life, but perishable. Number nine, how much you love God may be discerned individually by the money index uh, to divide willing expenditures to God by total expenditure. That's a close reference right there. And in the New Testament time, at least 10% index is recommended by Jesus, like the necessity in the Old Testament time, you know, tithes. So that's a close reference right here. Look, uh, Alive in uh, 42 Malachi 3 So, number one, uh, one to five. Now, concerning the ministering to the saints, it is a superfluous for me to write to you. For I know your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians, that Achaia was a radio a year ago and your zeal has stood up the majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect. That is, I said, you may be ready, lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this competent boasting. Therefore, I thought it uh, necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gifts beforehand, which you had previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. Paul doesn't need to write about this ministry to deliver the donation to the church or the Christians in Jerusalem because Paul knows the desire of the Christians in Corinth of the Achaia region to donate a year ago. Paul boasted or testified the desire to the Christians of the Macedonia region, exhorting many Christians there to donate. But Paul had sent the brothers to make sure the donation to be ready before my arrival at Corinth with some Christians of Macedonia region. Otherwise, we would be ashamed of the confidence of boasting or testimony to them. Therefore, Paul had to exhort or encourage each of you to prepare for generous macrogenic donation according to your previous promise upon the desire 
before our arrival. I can understand a little bit how God feels if a person gives and then he complains about what he has given to God. I'm sure God said, I didn't ask for it. I don't need it. I don't want it. Everything comes from God. God doesn't accept donation without a willing mind. It's the matter of a heart to love God. Number six, but this I say, he who sold the sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sold the bountifully will also reap a bountifully. When you give a bountifully, generously, or liberally to God, you will receive the bountiful, generous, or liberal reward from sovereign God. That is a heavenly reward, or even earthly reward, as stated above. Otherwise, you will receive a superling or a few rewards. Here is their donation for the poor church in Jerusalem to God should be bountiful, not superling. God recommends us to give a first fruit to God and then to give money or something to the poor, the widows, fatherless, or the aliens whom God's heart is upon. Those are summarized to second greatest, uh, second greatest commandment, first love God, and second, to love your neighbor or a needy person as yourself. That all cross reference right there. Verse seven, question two. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart in the spirit, not grudging or of necessity, for God loves the cheerful gift. Let each donor purposes in his heart, in the support. Each one is recommended from generous, bountiful, liberal, cheerful, or willful heart in the support, not reaching in the sass or pressure in the flesh. As a steward of God, each one should allow. by treasure to the church in Jerusalem. So, uh, course reference right there. Verse eight, and God is able Things it stated up to you. So they share them abundantly, liberal, or bountifully with others for every good work, which it does support lads. Verse 9 As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The person who lived by faith, or the righteous person, has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remained forever. Cross reference right here, uh, Psalm 112. Verse 10. Now may he who supply the seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed. You have sown and increased the fruits of your righteousness. God provides the seed uh, to the sower or farmer up to the bread for your food. You sow the seed and God makes the seed grow. God multiplies the seed by making its fruit increase. So the bread to it is enriched that you may give it with liberality. That is your righteousness. To give her with liberality is a gift of the support. Super. In everything, reality which causes the thanksgiving to God. Because you are enriched in earthly tender things, such as money or something, you may give her with liberality or generosity to the church in Jerusalem who would give thanks to God through us, poor communists and donors. 
Verse 12, for the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgiving to God. The administration of this delivery of your donation to the church in Jerusalem, the administration is a gift of the Spirit, suffices the need of the church or the saints in Jerusalem who would give bountifully thanks to God. Close reference right here. Verse 13, question 3. Why do the proof of this ministry they glorify God for the obedience of your compassion? Uh, to or profess the subjection into the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. Due to the proof of this ministry by our delivering your donation to the saints uh, in Jerusalem, they would glorify God or uh, for you because of your, uh, your obedience by professing into or compassing the gospel of Christ and uh, for your liberal or generous sharing with them and uh, all believers. To give it with liberality or simplicity as a gift of the Spirit is a long, not murmuring forced or pressed heart in the flesh. Number 14, and by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. They are praying for you. They would love to meet you because they would see the exceeding grace of God in uh, your liberal donations. 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. Paul closed it up by giving thanks to God for his unspeakable uh, gift, which is really the motive for donation or giving to God. They are the gift of his son, the gift of gospel, which caused Jesus to life with love for our sins. The gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, joy, peace, mercy, love, and so on. God has given so much. All that I have is his. Lord, we were only given that what is really yours anyhow. For your glory, your kingdom, your righteousness, or your increase. So we covered all three questions. Continue to keep on prayer. Uh, where the damage recently from Midwest you know, area. So uh, continue to keep on prayer. Pray for abandoned children in Ukraine and uh, God's increase as well. Pray for the feeding people from starvation and sickness. Here's a particular picture of the Sudan area. Calvary and I'm here to mission to keep on prayer. You see in the European community the missions too. Uh, that is the delivery of the word of God, uh, uh, the mission areas on their side. Okay, in the middle. You got to start with it. Yeah, this is a... This is... 